All right, today we're looking at letter number 48. So this is the 48th book of the Bible. Who remembers how many books are in the Bible? Simon? 66. 66, that's right. Okay, so we're getting close to the end, aren't we? Because we're almost at 50, and there's 66 all up. Simon, can you get Noah? Let me put her on your lap, please. Don't let her wander around. And this letter is called the Galatians. The Epistle to the Galatians. Elizabeth, thank you. Epistle to the Galatians. Why is it called... Eyes up here, guys, when I'm talking. Why is it called the Epistle to the Galatians? All right, because it was written to the believers at Galatia. So if you remember Corinth, they were called Corinthians. The people that lived in Galatia are called Galatians. So notice now we're going through the letters of Paul. So these are the epistles that Paul wrote to the believers at the different church locations. And especially today, we're going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit. But this letter, you remember Paul? Remember how on the way to Damascus, he met Jesus and he was blinded? Ah, you guys missed that story. Maybe you have to go back and listen to it. So Paul was going on the road to Damascus and a bright light came and that was Jesus. Jesus appeared to him. And when he first saw Jesus, he was blinded. And then when he went to Damascus, he had to go and he couldn't see until God sent somebody to um, lay their hands on Paul and then his, uh, the scales came off his eyes and he was able to see. So that represented his, you know, his salvation, right? Him being blind to the truth, but now being able to see. And after he, he was unblinded and he got saved, he went and he went to go preach the gospel. So when we read in the New Testament, it's a lot of the Acts of Paul and what he did in Acts and also a lot of the letters that he wrote to the different churches. One of the letters he wrote was to the church at Galatia, the Galatians. And you know one thing he was warning about? You know what was happening at the church at Galatia? Take your hands out of your mouth. One thing that was happening at the church in Galatia is they were coming in with a false gospel. You know what I mean by a false gospel? A gospel that isn't the true gospel. What's the true gospel? That Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again for your sins. And all you have to do is believe on him. Salvation is by grace, what we do. Something that God does for you, not something you do for God. But in the Galatian church, what was happening is people were starting to come into that church and telling people that Jesus Christ wasn't enough for you to be saved, that you had to do some work of your own. You had to be circumcised. So circumcised is something that adult males did. And they were saying, hey, you have to do this circumcision in order to go to heaven, not just believe on Jesus Christ. And you know what Paul said? This is what he said in Galatians 1.8. He said, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Why was it so serious? Why was Paul so serious about people that were coming to the Galatian church and preaching another gospel, a gospel not of salvation by grace, but of by works? Why is it so serious? It's because people that believe salvation by works, working their way to heaven, aren't going to go to heaven. They're going to go to hell, unfortunately. Not because they're worse than us, but it's because they haven't put their faith on Jesus. See, if you try and work your own way to heaven, you're not going to be good enough. But if you put your faith on Jesus, that's how you can make sure you're going to heaven because you're trusting what Jesus did for you on the cross. So it's very serious when people come in and teach something other than that, when they teach you that you have to work your way to heaven because if you do, then you will not make it to heaven. Look at what Paul says. Even if you have to do one good work in order to get to heaven, you won't make it because you won't be good enough. You have to trust Jesus fully. Look at this, Galatians chapter 5, verse 2. Behold, so what does behold mean? Look. All right, that's what behold means. Right, Abel? That's what behold means. Sit down on your chair. Come on, sit down. Look forward. Behold means look. Right? Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. See, so if you do a bit of work yourself, does Christ profit you a little bit? No. Christ profits you nothing. That's why you have to make sure all your faith is on Jesus. Right? If you don't, then you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to be good enough if you try and make your own way there. Right? So you have to put your faith on Jesus. So this is what Paul was telling them. 
all your faith has to be on what Jesus did for you. Jesus died on the cross. What happened after he died? His body was taken from the cross, buried. And then three days later, what happened? Do you know? He was alive again. That's right. He resurrected. The tomb was empty. And that's what you have to have your faith on. Right? So you have to trust, I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did, not because of what I do. Now, something else Paul taught in Galatians is he taught the fruit of the Spirit. So that's what our activity is going to be about today. The fruit of the Spirit. Look, Galatians 5, chapter 22, uh, verse 22 and verse 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So this is the fruit of the Spirit. Once you are saved, you want to be walking in the Spirit. What does that mean? You're trying to do what's right, not what's wrong. And when you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to have these fruits of the Spirit that we're going to learn about today as we do our activity. But let's go through them. So we'll read this together first and then I'll explain. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine fruit of the Spirit is mentioned in the Word of God. Let's read it together. You ready? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. So what is it saying? These are the different fruits that come of the Spirit as you walk in the Spirit. And it's saying, there's no law saying that you can't do these because you can do these as much as you like because these are good things to have. So let's take a look at them quickly. Everyone knows what love is, right? Remember we learned about love last week? So love is not just a feeling. Because you know some people say, oh, I really love this, I really love this food, or I really love this person. And they're talking about how they feel. No, well, love, true love of the Spirit is what we do for others. Right? So if you love somebody, you're going to do something nice for them. You're going to put them first, aren't you? This is what love is. So love is when you care about others and you do what's best for them, not what's best for you. Right? The opposite of love is like selfishness, when you do what, what you want to do, not what the other person wants to do. That's love. Joy. What's joy? This is when you're happy. Right? But not just happy for a temporary amount of time. Real joy is when you have eternal happiness. Happiness that lasts, isn't it? So joy, another word for being very happy. Peace. What's peace? Peace is when you feel very calm. You're not worried about things. When you walk in the Spirit, you have peace. You have peace. Why? Because you know that you're saved. You know that no matter what happens, you will have a home in heaven. What about long-suffering? Well, that's a long word as well, isn't it? Long-suffering is a long word. But if we break it down, what does it mean to be long-suffering? Well, it's when you suffer long. Right? So when you suffer long, it's when you are able to put up with bad things that are done to you. Maybe somebody's not being nice to you. You have to go through some hard things and you can suffer with it. You can put up with it for a long time. So long suffering. Sometimes we think of it as like patience, you know, when we, when the way we use the word today. Long suffering. What about gentleness? Gentleness is the opposite of being hard or harsh with people. Have you ever got into a fight with somebody or an argument and you go, you get angry with them, you, you shouldn't do this or you did this to me. That's when you're not being gentle, right? That's when you're being hard. Right? The fruit of the Spirit is when you're gentle with people and you talk softly, you talk nicely, you talk respectfully. So you know when you're being like, Aah! you know you're not walking in the Spirit, right? Being naughty, right? So gentleness. What about goodness? So good, when you're good, that's when you do the right things, right? So when you have goodness, you're doing what is right. Faith. What does faith mean? Faith is when you believe. So when we pray for people, when we have faith in God, we, are, we, we uh, believe what God says. This is what faith is. Not just faith in anybody, not confidence in man. We will put faith in God. Meekness. Abel, what does it mean to be meek? You know, you're paying attention? Meekness. So meekness 
is when you are humble, you know your place. So maybe you haven't heard this word before, but this is symbol to being humble. It's when you know who is above you and where your place is, right? So sometimes as a child, you have parents above you, you need to listen to mum and dad. But also as believers, we have God always at the top. So we need to obey God and we need to do what God says. We need to know that we are not God, we are under God. And the last one is temperance. What does temperance mean? Temperance is when you have discipline, right? When, you're, when you are consistent, you're disciplined, and you do things consistently, right? So people who are not temperate, who don't have temperance, they do things sometimes and don't do things another time, and they're not always consistent. Whereas with temperance, we want to be disciplined. We want to have control over our body, not just, oh, I do it when I feel like it, and when I don't feel like it, I don't want to do it anymore. Temperance is I do it whether I feel like it or not. Okay, so love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Okay, so we've got a craft today. So Elizabeth prepared a craft where we're going to learn a bit more about the fruit of the Spirit. So let's all stand up and we're going to go to the back and then we're going to work on this craft. Okay, let's go.